Hey guys, Mike Bays, Bettendorf Stanford back again. Uh, we're going to talk about splitters on your hen slicers today. Everybody's, uh, if you slice some hamburger, uh, hot dog buns, chances are you got one. And some bakeries are the biggest problem they've got. Some bakeries don't even know they're there. Before we get started, if we show you anything or tell you to do anything that goes against any safety practices or rules you have in your plant, just shut it off, don't watch it now, and uh, do it the way you've been taught. Otherwise, here's what we're going to do. This is Dale. He's uh, he's over our parts assembly here. He uh, takes care of everything from complete tucker tables all the way down to just putting drag strips on grid bars. Y'all get something that's not put together right, you send the hate mail to his house, not mine, because he's either assembled it himself or he's, he's supervised the people that assembled it. We're going to take this splitter apart. We're going to put new bearings in it. We're going to get it set up right. I think most people that's got problems with them is probably because they're not completely set up right. So Dale's going to get started on taking her apart. I'm going to tell you on a splitter, the best way to remember a splitter is the technical name for it is a separator. So if your buns is coming towards your slicer this direction, them screwdriver blades need to be turning this way to separate that bun. If they're turning the other way, it's just going to mangle the top of that bun and nothing's going to get done. So we're going to take this... Uh, <clears throat> splitter apart now we done took the drive off of it and if you're talking about the splitting the separating of the buns obviously we'll cover this a lot more when we get into the hinge slicer detail part but to change the rotation of screwdrivers you just flip flop this drive pulley on it so he's going to take the nuts on <clears throat> we're going to tap the, the spindle the slow screwdriver spindles whatever everybody calls them screwdrivers out they should come out really easy He's going to tap the other one out. All right. Now we're going to take a look at our, we're going to take a look at these snap rings, make sure the snap rings is in good shape. We'll take the, we'll take the pulleys off. We'll clean them. And now we're going to go take this block. And we're going to set it in our really super duper expensive 1999 from the Walmart toaster oven. Set it about 300 degrees for about five minutes. When we do that, we'll come back and we'll put it back together. All right, guys, we're back. We put this thing in that high-tech oven of ours. Uh, it, uh, heat, the bearings come out real simple after you do that. That aluminum soaks up that heat and expands at such a much faster rate than the bearing does, they'll just fall out. We've checked the inside. We've checked our snap rings here, making sure our snap rings is in good shape. There's no issues with them. We've cleaned her up. Now Dale's gonna put her together. Important thing to remember on this is these little old bearings will not take any kind of abuse so we use this little tool we made here uh, the inclination for most people is to grab a socket and a hammer and beat the hell out of it until it goes in uh, that'll get you run off here really quick because uh, these little bearings just won't take it so we press all of our bearings in here we won't allow anybody to get close to one with a hammer the angle of this thing makes it uh, makes it a little tricky to, to uh, press them in with an arbor press, so we've come up with this little old, little old bolt here. It's just a 3 8 bolt with uh, 5 16 washers that's been turned down to the right diameter. Don't forget to put your little spacer They'll in there. They'll forget that, that sometimes, so uh, yeah, make sure. He usually does 10 and then forgets the 11th, but uh, we want to want to get her together and, and that washer, we made that washer just so it fits outside of that bearing. <clears throat> He'll run that down. We like to put a little green Loctite on there. Reason for that is because you don't want it to spin in that aluminum housing. If it does lock up, you want it to spin on that shaft and not that housing. Dale's going to fake the Loctite because we're going to take this back part later. But uh, we put just a little drop of green Loctite on there. Hold it in that aluminum housing real well. <clears throat> now he's going to tighten down both them bolts there, and, or the, that nut and that bolt, and, and draw them bearings down inside there. And that draws them down nice and even. Uh, equal pressure. We're pressing on the inner race, the outer race at the same time, so we're not going to damage that seal or them little balls or that little ball retainer in there. That's all it takes right there. Now, uh, we're talking about O-rings now uh, on, your, on your drive here. Uh, some plants swear by these square ones, some of them swear by the round ones. Uh, we don't really have an opinion on it. We really don't care. Uh, if, you like the, if you like the square ones, you like the round ones, it makes no difference. The round ones came out at a later date after the square ones, supposedly an improvement. I don't know if they are or not, but some bakeries swear by one, some bakeries swear by the other. If you want to discuss them, y'all just give uh, uh, 
Olivia or, or Lenny a call and they'll be happy to talk to you and tell you about the differences in them. <clears throat> now we're going to put the other side in there, same way as we did the, the same way as we did the, uh, the other side of the bearings there. <clears throat> You're going to use the same little fixture and just and just run them down. And you don't want to you don't want to crank that you don't want to crank down that just when it gets tight that's when you stop right there until it stops. Now we've got them bearings seated against our. If they'll remember, put spacer in that side. We've got the bearings seated against our spacer. We know our spacer is centered on the bearing, inner race of the bearing, and and everything's ready to go. Don't forget to clean your Loctite off. You don't want that in your bearings. All right. Now we're gonna put our. I think Dale's gonna go ahead and put the O-rings on his uh, on his pulley there. That's the way he likes to do it. <clears throat> we got uh, got a little little jig made. We used to use put the O-rings on there. Uh, you can also, we can also use these pliers right here to put them O-rings on there. If it's already on the shaft, sometimes these pliers are really handy. Uh, if you don't know what these pliers are, uh, get a hillbilly country boy from your bakery and he can tell you exactly what them pliers is for. You wanna see our O-rings? We, we've experimented over the years with several different kinds of O-ring material and we always come back to that Buna. Uh, they, they seem to last the longest. They got a little more stretch and they're a little more forgiving and they don't uh, they don't dry out so bad. Now we're gonna always try to put new set screws in there. The set screws cost probably a nickel a piece. Uh, but crying out loud, think about the think about the mechanic that's gonna follow you out there and he's gonna have to dig all the stuff out. And if one of them cracks, you guys know as well as I do, that can be a two hour job getting that thing out of there. So I, I always tell everybody just this. this Put new set screws in it. Now we're gonna get screwdriver shafts back in there. <coughs> he's just gonna he's just gonna snug it down because we gotta adjust it here in a minute. And anytime you tighten up, anytime oh, you tighten up, fingers. clock out when you when you bend down to get that thing up. <laughs> clock back in when you come back. Anytime you tighten them set screws up, you wanna make sure that the set screw is really good on your flat right there. Uh, you don't want that pulley coming up and down on you. And with norm, under normal circumstances, we'd have put a little blue Loctite on that set screw. Now, when you go to put them screwdrivers into that block, they should slide in. At the worst case, you might have to twist them a little bit and give them a little jiggle, but they should slide right in. Up against that snap ring. We also would always put a little uh, blue Loctite on the jam nut. That one slid in good. We got a jam nut around here somewhere. There it is. Now we we torque them jam nuts down. We torque them down to five to seven pound in, uh, inch pounds of torque. Uh, I would never go over ten. I think if you get you get much over eight or nine inch pounds of torque on that, you're going to have premature bearing failure. <coughs> Put some Loctite on them, Dale. We'll, uh, we, did, we, we reused the same bearings, guys, because I didn't want to waste four bearings doing a video on a, on a used splitter because uh, the bearings we use are not cheap. Uh, if you're buying the cheap bear, cheapest bearings you can find, you're going to be changing them things out every week. We use a real high-quality uh, bearing. They're not, they're not cheap, and, but they'll last, they'll last a good long time. The, those things spin really fast. And I think mostly the failure rates that most people have with them, the problems they have is they bought a, they bought just a, a bearing from the cheapest place they can find a bearing. They got somebody out there hammering the bearing in and they torque these little jam nuts down too tight. <clears throat> well, we're going to just we're just going to we're going to torque them down to our standard five to seven, and that's tight enough. All right. Now, when it comes to setting these, when it comes to setting these little uh, little uh, pulleys here, well, we got to loosen them up now, don't we? When it comes to setting them, I think this is another problem a lot of folks have is when they set these things up, they want to set them too tight, or they don't get them even. And I don't know if y'all can see that, but if we got this, if we got this uh, 
pulley up above the one with the O-rings, when we turn that on, that's gonna drive them O-rings straight off that screwdriver. On the other hand, if we got a set like that, that's gonna drive them O-rings straight up on that screwdriver. So we want them things nice and even and level together. And we're just gonna barely push them down, make sure they're on, their, on the flats good. I'll just tighten that down a little bit. And then when we spin that, I won't be able to hold one and spin the other. So I should be able to do just like that, and I ought to be able to hold that one and spin that one. If we try to get them more tighter than that, we're gonna melt them old rings right off, them screwdrivers, and, and that's that's always an issue. Put your, put your pulley back on the side that you took it off of so your separators are turning, separating the bun like we talked about earlier. <clears throat> you got anything else, Dale? No, I think uh -huh. pretty well covered everything. I think that wraps this one up. Uh, you guys cuss a little bit, laugh a little bit, work safe, work smart, and walk out of the plant with all the fingers you walked in on. We'll see you in about a week, 10 days.